There have been a lot of announcements of announcements and a lot of speculation about some really interesting things in the Cardano ecosystem. And I'm going to reveal one of them that has come up recently. But also this weekend, we're seeing the launch of Mahan USD stablecoin, first fiat backed stablecoin on the Cardano ecosystem. So super excited about this one. I think it's really going to highlight and change a lot of things in the Cardano ecosystem itself. But this is what we've been seeing for most of the week. Announcements, I'm very pleased to announce that we have a lot of announcements. So yes, a lot of announcements of announcements. But one of the really interesting things that had happened on Twitter was this X space with the Mohan team. And I did listen through this one here to find out exactly what the launch is going to be like of USDM itself. And it's quite interesting what the team have brought up. The very first initial part of this launch will be for the institutional investors. And that's a, a very broad term, but it's usually users with a lot more USD that can be minting the USDM. Uh, a stable coin asset. So we're going to see a lot of uh, uh, retail users, smaller players that may be wanting to mint a, cup, a few hundred or a few thousand USDM come into play later this month. So by the end of this month, we'll see the full opening of the USDM stablecoin platform where you'll be able to mint uh, the stablecoin itself. Now it's only going to be opened up to 17 states at the beginning here and that's where they have licenses to be able to go through this process. So it's a bit of a slow launch and a slow start but it's probably a really good approach because we do want to make sure this is all working right. There's some really interesting unique features of the platform uh, that I will highlight in a moment too. Now from this AMA, I'd just like to point out a couple of things here. I did take a few notes. The first one here is around a couple of security measures that were implemented in from the audit. So I did do a breakdown of the audit and talk about a couple of aspects from it. But one of the really interesting things that Matt in this AMA that he spoke about was the protection mechanisms from the team itself. I thought this was a really interesting aspect. And I'd like to highlight this because this, this is like an attack vector that you sometimes don't think about. You think of uh, a malicious actor trying to come in and exploit the smart contract or mint extra USDM that doesn't exist in the reserves. Because remember, it has to be that fiat backed one-to-one -one stablecoin. But what happens if the internal team changed the Oracle? or switched it over and then was able to mint an unlimited amount of USDM, sell that USDM and then cash out and, and uh, go to some other country where they could never be found again, just to disappear somewhere on the planet. Now that could possibly happen, but because the Sunday team had highlighted some of these potential vulnerabilities within the audit, they implemented these time delay uh, mechanism so that uh, the team itself wouldn't be able to perform that type of attack. I thought that was really interesting and it, it really shows the uh, caliber and uh, the integrity of the team to be able to put in and implement some of these really interesting features to protect the protocol from themselves. So I absolutely love that they've implemented that and implemented that level of security on the platform. The other thing that Matt did mention, and I did go through this with him in previous interviews, and you can check out those interviews on the channel. I'll put links down below for you so you can learn a little bit more about uh, Mahan and the USDM stablecoin in general. But the thing that he mentioned here was that regulated entities such as banks like to work with other regulated entities. So you can do everything and be as transparent as possible, but being having that regulated stamp of approval from a third party is always a really good thing. Now the stablecoin ecosystem, you don't need regulations currently in the United States, but to be able to operate and work with these other banks and entities, it's really good to uh, operate and and show that you are working towards regulation. So I thought that was really interesting to know and see that the Mohan team are completely trying to work on a regulated basis, even though there are no regulations around the minting and burning of stablecoins in the ecosystem itself. 
The other really interesting aspect is around chain raise and how they're doing a crowdfunding for the Mahan business entity itself. So you as a user of Mahan and a believer of the actual protocol and the company itself can actually invest via chain raise and have that crowdfunding experience and earn own equity within the company. So I really like that. But um, the really interesting aspect that they also mentioned was that they're going to uh, use the profits from their reserves. So the, the, the reserves that go into the protocol, they will earn interest and that interest will be used for marketing efforts and putting, being put back into the Cardano ecosystem. So if you're building and working with the Mahen team, maybe you're integrating in the USDM stablecoin onto your protocol, the Mahen team could potentially be funding that for you so that you can have that integrated in. So I really love that aspect of the reinvestment into the Cardano ecosystem itself. So that's really, really cool to see. And I can't wait to see what type of development uh, that the USDM stablecoin uh, profits from those reserves could actually help implement within the Cardano ecosystem. So, so really interesting aspects there. The other really cool thing about Chainraise is that they actually help Mahen or other companies that do use their platform to tokenize themselves and tokenize that equity and bring it on chain. So there will be eventually at one point in the future, uh, about a year after they go through the crowdfunding process, where users will be able to trade the equity of Mahen on a decentralized exchange. That is really cool. So it really opens up the doors to uh, this decentralized investment and ser serious investment because it will be uh, equity or security uh, for that particular company being traded on decentralized exchange. So this this is really, really interesting. Um, I'm sure there's all these aspects around um, AML and KYC that uh, would have to be integrated into uh, the ownership of this equity, but it opens up a whole bunch of more liquidity to Mohan Finance and that type of equity as well. So really interesting mechanisms here. I can't wait to see this actually come into play. I'm really excited about this uh, chain raise and what they could potentially do for not just Mohan, but other uh, crypto projects, other Cardano projects that may be looking into uh, doing the same type of thing. The other really interesting aspect was around the fee structure. So this has now been officially launched and you can see it on screen here. There'll be no fees for minting USDM and bringing it on chain, but there will be a fee for taking it off and bringing it back to fiat currency. So if you do want to uh, uh, exit and burn the USDM, there is that minimum 50 US dollars for doing so. So if you're thinking about burning 500 USD worth of USDM and taking it off chain and bringing it back into your bank account, you will have to pay that $50 fee. So that is quite high. It's a large portion of your funds there. Of course, you can always swap it for ADA and then exit that way or swap it on a, um, for USDC and then bridge it and then you know, exit that way. So there's, there's lots of different ways that you can go about it but doing it direct by Mahen would incur that $50 fee. They also have that maximum fee of 5,000. So if you're exiting 10 million, the maximum you pay is 5,000 USD for doing so. So it really does vary, but um, it's whatever is bigger, either that 1.5% uh, burning fee or the $50 fee for burning. Now, of course, the fee structure is subject to change and it may increase or decrease over time as well. So keep an eye on that, uh, especially once we start picking up the uh, USDM and start using it more in the Cardano ecosystem. The fees could vary based on its uh, uh, adoption in general. Now, I thought this was a really interesting tweet from Crypto Lark, and he mentions here, Cardano has been a bit overlooked this cycle, but the TVL on Cardano has increased significantly this year. It has now reached around the 600 million mark, surpassing previous highs. And that's uh, when the price of ADA was going up. It has dropped a little bit at the moment, but uh, that's okay. We're, we're seeing here now the TVL of Cardano quite, quite strong. If we look at it in terms of ADA, so this is the TVL and ADA. It's been quite steady since October in 2023. It hasn't really changed much. In fact, it's just fluctuated around that uh, 650 uh, million ADA mark. And it's just been hovering around that, that mid uh, 600 
Now, I really do believe that when USDM enters into the Cardano ecosystem, once it's had time to settle and more people are minting it, we will see this TVL increase dramatically, especially when you start looking at it from a USD, USD point of view as opposed to just an ADA point of view. So if you have, switch it over to the USD, yeah, that really follows the price of um, ADA as well. So as the price of ADA goes up, this TVL will go up, but that will start stabilizing and look a little bit different when USDM is integrated in there as well. And we start seeing uh, a different asset type coming in on chain. So we're going to see uh, a lot of differences and uh, increase in TVL, I really believe, over the next few months. Now, if you're interested, the USDM team have put up a pre-prod version of the platform itself. This is it here. You can get to it at preprod.mahan.io. The links are in their Twitter profile. Let me just go back one. Uh, here it is here. That's the link there. And you can see what the platform looks like and how it operates. So if you do plan on minting, if you are that uh, institutional investor, whatever that may mean, you be able to uh, try out the platform on pre-prod on the test net there and see how the process works. I did have a little bit of play here, but it is also region locked. So people here in Australia or overseas won't be able to use the platform um, on the launch of this particular date. Now at the end of the month, when it does open to the retail users, uh, essentially everyone else that would be wanting to use the platform, the bank that they're using does accept other fiat currencies as well. So from what I've heard that was mentioned, sterling and euro will also be available for retail users on the platform. So it's uh, pretty good that that has that capability and ability to onboard international users but we won't see that to the end of march itself so keep an eye out for it if you are interested in minting usdm as a retail user wait for the end of the month where we'll be able to uh, be able to access that when the gates are open for everyone else in the ecosystem now this other really big news update comes from the Liquid Labs team, Liquid Finance, and Johnny Sachs here had the privilege of ringing the bell on the launch of a new ETP. So this is an exchange traded product for Cardano staking with the ticker Castle. C-A-S-L. Now this is super exciting. It's essentially an, an institutional product that is allowing uh, institutional investors to uh, buy and get exposure to Cardano and its staking rewards. So this article here does go through everything. It, it talks about what, what um, the liquid finance team had managed. So Cardano staking exchange a traded product ETP is available on six Swiss exchange as of today. I did have a look at the six Swiss exchange. This is it here. You can go to six group.com to have a look at this as well. If you want to look at the actual listing itself, just scroll down a little bit here and you can get to list of ETPs. You have to go and filter a little bit to find it because there are quite a lot of ETPs. I had no idea there were a lot of these ETPs around, but this is the one that we're looking at here. This is Cardano ADA staking by Liquid. Amazing work, guys, to get to this point. I, I couldn't imagine the amount of regulatory paperwork that had to be done to get this uh, to happen. But this is now trading. It's it's active. We only have the uh, activity for uh, Friday at the moment, but we'll check back um, in you know 24 hours, see how this has gone on Friday's trading, and then we'll also check back in a couple of months' time to see how it's performing at the moment. Now institutional investors will be able to gain access not only to the asset itself but also its staking rewards so uh, this comment here we're going one step further putting ada's outstanding asset to work and redistributing the interest to investors so the interest is coming from the staking rewards but then also uh, the putting here the asset to work i'm assuming that's putting the asset to work on liquid finance uh, so when you're borrowing lending on there you'd be able to earn some of the uh, rewards from the platform itself but you always get to earn your staking rewards on the platform itself so this is that double yield uh, from your crypto investment there and i think it's going to be quite appealing for a lot of uh, institutional investors to get to uh, 
optimal returns on their investment. So uh, again, congratulations to the Liquid Finance team for getting to this point. Having this ETP makes a huge difference in the ecosystem and brings in institutional investors. I think this is one of the very first ones, uh, first avenues for in institutional investors to get onto the Cardano blockchain. So I really do believe this will open the flood doors and we will see more institutional products, more institutional investors come onto the Kadana blockchain. Super exciting. Again, congratulations, Liquid Finance team. Now that's all the really serious announcements that I could find at the moment around the Kadana ecosystem. But this one here is between Josh from Late Game Crypto and myself. I have challenged Josh to a race in Cornucopius. This is going to be a one-on-one -on -one race where I am going to absolutely smash him and take all the glory in this one-on-one -on -one race. Um, it's going to be streamed on his channel here. I don't like this title. Noob challenges me to a one-on-one. -on -one. But I can understand because he's putting this on his other channel, which um, is still quite small. You can check it out here. Uh, I'll put links to it down below. Uh, but his Gamble 3, uh, Gamble 3 Gaming, so it's a, a Web3 Gaming uh, specific channel. Um, not many subscribers here, so uh, I, I can understand why he put it on there because he doesn't want to be embarrassed by being beaten by me. Now, I... I've sharpened my racing skills since the early 90s playing games such as Ridge Racer, uh, Road Rash, absolutely love that game, and, uh, and Wipeout, which is essentially very, very similar to the Cornucopius game. It's like that uh, futuristic high-speed racing. Josh, you don't stand a chance. I'm going to absolutely smash you. Um, if anyone's interested, you can check out the live streams. I will have it also live streamed on my channel as well. So do, do tune in. Uh, the time here for me will be uh, Australian time, Monday, 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, or if you're in the United States, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time there. So uh, check out that race. Again, Josh, be scared. I'm going to get you. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also that notification bell. I'll keep you up to date with everything that's happening in the Cardano ecosystem. And I have a whole bunch of other news updates here. Check out these other videos around the Cardano ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast.